Hello, my name is Seraphim1313, and I would like to share with you the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic Any% Percent Glitchless Speedrun. This video will show off what this speedrun might look like in a marathon setting, and is for anyone who wants to learn more about how this speedrun works and to understand it better. This game draws influence on D&D characteristics, so we get to choose a class to start with. We're going to choose Scout. The gender doesn't matter. The Scout's main benefit is it helps with save throws. A little bit more defensively minded. That way, when enemies try to use abilities on us, we have a better chance of dodging them. For our portrait, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. I'm going to use this one because it's the one I randomly got when I first learned the game. And, well, it's I got world record with it. Might as well keep using it. For our attributes we're going to put as many points in the strength as we can because strength is our is the stat that will determine our damage and accuracy dexterity we'll put some points into that because dexterity is good for defensive um interactions in the game constitution we want 14 for higher health and then 10 in intelligence which will make sure that we're not losing any modifiers on the skills that we use Skills allow us to do a variety of things throughout the game. Our starting skill set will be four points in the computer use because we will want to use some computer terminals uh, to do some different things throughout the run to go faster. And the higher your computer use skill is, the less computer spikes you have to use in order to accomplish what you want to accomplish. We will put one point into stealth. This will give us an extra item that we can sell for credits and four into Treat Injury. Treat Injury gives us more health out of med packs that we use. So higher, your higher the Treat Injury is, the more health you get from a healing item. We'll save the remaining two points for later. Feats will make us proficient in different types of areas. Most of the feats we get are to enhance our melee capabilities. And so we'll start with Weapon Focus Melee Weapons. I'm going to name my character Seraphim, because that's me. And time starts when we hit play. So three, two, one, go. And right away, I will be starting off this run with a strategy. I am holding left. An interesting thing about Knights of the Old Republic is you can move during cutscenes. So by holding left, when the cutscene transitions, my character will walk to the left while Trask comes in and talks to us, so I'll be right next to the footlocker so I can loot it right away. And Trask is uh, the party member that teaches okay. you about how the, the early game works. So uh, so how does this game work? Well, Trask is going to help us do all those, those uh, things. Trask is also going to be our main source of DPS. I want to equip the second blaster pistol on him. He has a an ability called Power Shot, and that ability will be the best source of damage and consistent damage. Cue so that to attack both Sith soldiers. I'm gonna loot this Foot Locker to get some swords and some grenades, which we'll use later on. A lot of the Foot Lockers that we loot throughout the run are mostly for items that we sell for a high number of credits. But early on, we will also loot things like grenades that we will use. So once we see this incredible cutscene, we have to kill these three Sith soldiers to move on. The grenade is the most consistent way to do this, so sometimes they won't die. Fortunately, all three died, and you can tell that because we were able to advance through this door. And hey, a Star Wars game, there's Jedi and Sith. This is epic. I want to be a Jedi. Aw, oh, shucks. Too bad I'm just a lowly scout. I'm sure we'll never become a Jedi in this game. That was one of the Jedi accompanying Bastila. Damn, we could have... Sure. So once again, we'll move the main character forward and have Trask attack the enemies. What? I like to pause there because sometimes Trask doesn't... If you if you try to lock onto that second Sith soldier uh, without... Pausing, it can sometimes, like stop the targeting and it's really annoying so i just pause there for safety it's just a little bit more consistent 
And Trask is going to be really nice to us and sacrifice himself to face this dark Jedi. That way we can escape from the Endar Spire. The story of the game starts off with us waking up in this Republic ship and the Sith are attacking and apparently we're some scout enlisted by the Republic to help with some mission. Something like that. We don't really know what's going on. All we need to... All we know is that we need to get out of here. This next area will be a helpful tutorial and how to use different mechanics in the game. So this computer terminal allowed me to kill these Sith soldiers because I had the appropriate skill. I could also just fight them one by one. So the game kind of introduces you to the really creative way of, hey, I could deal with these enemies in multiple different ways. All right, we are out of there. We escaped from our ship that was burning and crashing with this guy named Karth. But Karth's going to be one of our party members throughout the game. All right, you might have heard a beep right there. I activated an alacrity stem while the cutscene was loading. The reason I want to do this is early on in the game, our character moves quite slow, but we get access to alacrity stems that increase our movement speed by 20%. Before I leave, I want to equip the combat suit, the prototype vibroblade, and the regular vibroblade on my main character. This will be the most damage and best defense we can have at this point. Karth is also going to come with us because he's a pretty good source of DPS as well. So, Uh-oh, sit there. Killing civilians, that's rude. Well, we're, let's let's help these guys out. Throw a grenade at them. Alright. This guy will talk to us. I want to wait for him to talk because sometimes Karth will get stuck if I move too far forward and that guy doesn't talk to me. Alright, we have our first shopping trip of the game a lot of the shopping trips go pretty quick all you have to know is that i every time i go shopping i'm selling things that i don't need and buying things that i do need as well as keeping stuff that i need as well so we sell a lot of junk kept our grenades because we'll need them and we bought two computer spikes computer spikes help us to activate computer terminals and like i was saying in the beginning our computer spike route is pretty tight so we want to make sure we get the sufficient amount of computer spikes. Otherwise, we will lose a lot of time. And at this shop, Zelka is going to sell us a nerve enhancement package. That will help us protect against certain stun and other force effects later on in the run. We also bought a bunch of alacrity stems because alacrity stems, well, all the stems, will run out at some point. Now, I have to make a confession. I'm actually going to be doing a glitch in a glitchless run. It's a glitch. Uh, it's a glitch that's allowed because we can't avoid it. S the way that the developers coded how stim timers work, uh, they were like, well, you know what? It's not really fair if the timer runs out while you're in a loading zone. So they add more time to the stim, but sometimes the game will like glitch itself and your stim timer will get like way more time than you're supposed to get so we call it duration glitch what? one helpful way to move around in terrace is to activate solo mode because you can move a character to one door and get close to the loading zone while your other character takes care of some other business now, there's a double-edged sword to this because your whole party has to be next to the loading zone or close enough to it to go through it. I took Karth out of my party and will bring him back momentarily because sometimes Karth will get stuck and if he's not close enough to the loading zone, I have to wait for him to walk and it's a really big time loss. So in the first two areas, it was really nice to use solo mode and have multiple party members because I could get through those those doors faster. But in that particular section, it could have cost me a lot of time because if my party doesn't stay close like I want them to, well, then I lose time instead. We equip the Sith armor on Karth to give him some defense and get past that guard. And it'll give him some defense because just like Trask, Karth's power blast is a really good source of DPS for us. You asked for this. Nice. Got rid of those guys in no time. Once we get next to Javier's Cantina, 
I want to transit back to my hideout. There's a really helpful mechanic in KOTOR where you can transport back to your base or your ship. Uh, spoiler alert, we're going to get a ship. And this sets a transit point for later on. We are going to be coming back to this part of the planet later on in the run. Sure. And so by warping back to the hideout now, we can just warp back to the ca cantina later. Hold it right. So in terms of story, we're going to help out this gang. Because our mission on Terrace is to find Bastila. Bastila is some really important Jedi or something like that. And, well, she got lost in the blast that destroyed the Endar Spire, the ship we were on. Walk past those guys. And so we found out that the other gang has captured Bastila. So we're going to help them so we can get Bastila back. Whoa, who's that big scary guy? I'm sure we'll never see him again. I reactivated an alacrity stim, and this is a really helpful tip for anyone that's playing the game, even casually. You can activate stims and med packs from the menu or your inventory menu instead of having to do them in the combat queue. It's much faster. We traded the Sith armor for some paper so that way we can go to the Undercity. I also took Karth out of my party because if he got into combat with any of those enemies, he would not be close enough to the loading zone where we could go through. Our party members like to do stuff on their own terms, which is not good for the speedrun. All right, for our level up, we want to get two more points and treat injury. And we're going to get the empathy feat to help with our persuasion. We're going to dump a lot of skill points into persuasion later on in the run. But right now they cost two points to get one persuasion. Later on, we'll be able to use one point for one persuasion. Much more efficient use of our skill points. Sure. So the Undercity is infested by these things called Rackools, and they are nasty. They can uh, they can convert you or transform you into one of them. It's like a horrible zombie apocalypse. But the reason we came here is we need to break into the Hidden Vex base. To do so, we're going to go through the sewers. And in order to break through the sewers, we need help from Mission, this Twi'lek who we just got in our party. But she won't help us until we rescue her friend Zalvar, who is a Wookiee. Guess what? We're going to get another party member. Have you ever wanted to fly around the galaxy with a Wookiee companion? This is the game for you. All right, so the rescue Zalvar, all we have to do is click on the door. And I'm going to bring Zalbar into my party, mostly so he can tank the enemies in here while I go loot a chest that will give me some credits and other items that I will need, whether it's to sell or use later on. I equipped the main character with Mission's Vibro Blade because it's stronger, but I do want Zalbar to have two Vibro Blades on. I don't need him for combat right now, Oops. but I will need him later on. We don't need Zalbar anymore, but we will need Mission. I want to keep party members uh, off the screen or off, like, in use as much as possible because if they get into combat or something weird happens, then uh, I have to navigate the combat before I can move on. Fortunately, Mission teleports to this forest field, so I don't have to worry about those rat ghouls messing everything up. Now we don't need Mission anymore, and we can advance to the lower part of the sewers. One thing you might notice is that my dialogue seems to be moving really fast. The way that I do that is left click on your mouse will advance the dialogue, but the enter key next to your numpad also acts as a mouse click. So every time I need to just mash through dialogue and my dialogue options don't matter, I will be simultaneously mashing my left click mouse button and the enter key by the numpad to essentially double the speed of the dialogue. Coming up, we have our first of two skips in the run. Rancor skip. I will do a safety save here. Normally, you're supposed to do a bunch of stuff to kill the Rancor. Well, I'm just going to skip him. We can kind of go around in a circle, and I, did, I took that angle too uh, sharply. That's why we safety save. But if I do this right, he'll get caught against the wall there, and he won't swat at me. See, I just, I just wanted to show you what it looks like to fail the skip. 
Now you get the full context of the skip now. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. <laughs> and immediately after the first skip, we'll get our second skip in the run, turret skip. These are really only the two super crazy skips that we do, at least on Terrace. Everything else is pretty minor. Normally, you have to disable these turrets using a computer terminal. Well, instead of doing that, we're going to use concussion grenades to stun them. I need all three turrets to go down in order to get past the elevator. And all right, second try. Not bad, not bad. I will have to go out of my way to loot some chests to get more stuff to sell for credits and computer spikes. We'll also get some med packs, which is helpful. There isn't really a lot of RNG in this area other than the damage rolls that these enemies can do can sometimes be very punishing. Hopefully I won't take too much damage. Ow, that's a lot of damage. Ow, that's a lot of damage. Oh well, that's fine. Fortunately, our med pack almost got us back up to full. I do want to have a good amount of health because I will be taking on a group of enemies in this room to steal an engine. The way we're going to get Bastila back is to enter a swoop race, which is essentially pod racing. And to get an advantage, we're going to take this swoop accelerator that actually belonged to our gang in the first place back from the evil gang that stole it. So we got what we came for. Now it's time to leave. I do have to do a safety save here. On the way out, the turrets will sometimes shoot you. It's a one in two chance. The good news is if it shoots me once, I can just reload the save and it's guaranteed to work the second time. Fortunately, we didn't have to worry about that. Well, that droid shooting me is not very fun. Now we're going to walk out the front door. Because why not? So you'll notice that I have not used an alacrity sim for a long time. This is a great example of how duration glitch really makes a difference. All I have to do is go back to the hidden Beck base and we are ready to rescue Bastila. As this last part winds down, this would be a good time for donations to be read. But I've got good instincts. And you have the look of a racer about you. Just try to relax, and in the morning we'll take you to the I'm going to use this as a hydration break. I am a big fan of hydration. It's now time to do one of the first of a couple mini games throughout the speedrun. I guess it's throughout the game in general. This is called Swoop Racing. Like I said earlier, it's the same as Pod Racing. All you have to do is hit the speed pads, and as long as you don't crash, you'll get a good time. The way to advance the story is you have to do two races. The first race, you just establish a time. The second race, you have to beat your first time by a quarter of a second. So as long as you don't crash, you'll be fine. So, all right, we got a pretty good time. This prototype swoop engine works pretty good. Aw, Redros beat my time. Unbelievable. Oh, we're going to come after you, Redros. It's pretty easy to beat your first time because you do get a slight boost compared to the first race. It is uh, not a very difficult minigame to do as long as you don't crash. We did it! We're the champion! We're the best to ever do it! Woohoo! All right, give us Basila. That's the prize, is this Jedi. And then they're like, no, we're not. And you're like, what the heck? And then Basil's like, I'm not actually captured. And we're like, oh my gosh. 
All right, it's time to take on Bredrick. Bredrick is kind of a pain. The way we deal with Bredrick is you throw a poison grenade at him, which causes him to get stunned all the time, and then you throw two sonic grenades at him. Uh, okay, Bastila just went ham. Holy moly, you, this fight went really well. Sometimes the sonic grenades won't do much damage. It'll take longer to kill him, but Bastila decided to be a terror. Wow. Bastila. Is something... Now that we have Bastila in our party, we're going to use her because she has access to the Force because she's a Jedi. I wish we were a Jedi. Oh, well, I'm just a scout after all. All right. First of all, I'm going to increase treat injury and uh, get the nerve enhancement package on. I want to give Bastila Force Speed. Force Speed is very helpful. Just like that transit point I said earlier. See how we got back to the cantina right away? Thank you, I transit saw. warps. I'm here. Bastila's force speed doubles her movement. The alacrity sim's only 20% increase. This is 50% increased. So she is essentially our our taxi driver. In terms of the story, we need to break into a Sith base. Uh, that dude, Candorous, who I said we'll probably never have to work with. Shocker! We actually have to work with Candorous. We need to break into this military base in order to steal some codes, and then he can get us access to a ship so we can get out of here. Because what right now, there's a blockade blocking anyone from what can I getting out the planet. And to help us do so, we are going to enlist the help of T3. Uh-oh. Yes. yes. Erg. The main character is not moving. This is the problem with party members sometimes. Sure. What can I do? What? Uh, this is really annoying. So sometimes your party members will get stuck like this, and this is just un unfortunate time loss. Usually, when I do this the i kind of do a setup where i activate or i deactivate solo mode early and it usually helps but that time the main character just wasn't having it oh well first things first i'm gonna kill these sith in here with computer spikes because it's faster i'm gonna kill these sentry droids i am going to uh i don't know why you attacked that guy first that was really weird this Sith base is starting off really weird. I do want to free this Duros to get some light side points. You notice we got some dark side points by basically forcing Janus to give us T3. Our alignment does matter in the run. I will talk about that a little bit later on, though. For now, we have to navigate two of the most difficult boss fights in the speedrun. The first is the Assault Droid. The Assault Droid can be really difficult to hit because our level is so low. One way to help with that is to throw a, uh, a concussion grenade, which did work, and Zalbar didn't get stunned. stunned. Sometimes Zalbar gets stunned, and that's not good. Go, go, go! The Assault Droid's a lot easier to hit when it's stunned. I'm gonna med pack there. So that fight went really well. If the strat works, it's pretty not too bad. But if it doesn't work, trust me, it's horrible. Speaking of horrible, now we have to take on the Sith Governor, who is also hard to hit, unless T3 stuns him. If T3 stuns him, this fight won't be that bad. If T3 doesn't stun him, like he got stunned right now, uh, it becomes a problem because our main character gets stunned. And that's annoying. Sure. And now he is stunned, but so is my main character. All right, well, normally I just use my main character to get up, get up, loot everything, but he got stunned. So that's a really quirky fight. If you want to understand how punishing the split can be, my first fight went really well, but that second fight did not go so well. Look at how much time I'm losing in my PB. I had an unbelievably lucky Sith governor split where it's just a, this base essentially so you can tell that there is some rng this is definitely the biggest rng part of the speed run there are other parts of rng with the combat rules and all that but this is the most punishing by far 
So Basil's going to be our taxi driver. Now that we're done with that headache, we can go back to Candorus and get off of Terrace. Take Basil out of the party because there will be some uh, gang members here that want to fight me. And if I have a party member, they'll get into combat and then they'll stay there and not be close enough to the loading zone to the door in order for me to walk through it. So it is time. We are going to steal some dude named Davik's ship. We also want to bring T3 with us. T3 has a very high base computer use skill. So instead of us using the computer terminal, T3 using the computer terminal means we'll use less spikes. We cannot risk her escaping Taras. Destroy the but the main character will have to use a computer terminal at the very end of the game, so we still want some skill points in computer use. Of people on We'd be slaughtering countless innocent now we got some story time. That's Darth Malak, evil Sith Lord, Your wants to destroy everything. And he's after Bastila. Should Apparently, Bastila has some crazy Jedi power where she can turn the tide of battle. I guess it's called battle meditation. Very rare. Malak wants her dead. And to guarantee it, he is going to destroy the entire planet. That's pretty evil, Malak. Ooh, spooky. Hope we can get off the planet in time or else we'll be in trouble. So we are here so, posing we're as a lackey and we're like, hey, Davik, we're going to work for you. We're going to work for your crime syndicate. Nudge, nudge. And Candace is like, nah, dog, we'll just, uh, we'll just hijack the ship and leave. I'm going to do a strat here. T3 will sometimes get caught on Candorous on the way out of this room. And so I find it's more consistent if... I move T3 forward, so cool. They're both following me. That's a good sign. If you can use this computer terminal. We use T3 to open all the hangar bay doors, so instead of having to go through this base, we can just get out of here right away. Ah, crud. The planet's being destroyed. Uh-oh. They caught us. Don't worry. This boss fight is not that bad. All you have to do is get Kalo Nord's HP below half. I'll take care of them, Davik. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. We don't even know you. What do you mean looking forward to this for a long time? Somewhere safe. The bombs they're dropping will kill us all. So very consistently, we're gonna throw two grenades uh, with Candorus and the main character, and T3 will use the uh, his shield disruptor, and that will be plenty of damage. Ah! Oh, the main character went down. That's actually not good. It's not the end of the world, but I don't want him to take damage. Oh, this will be very interesting. Can I leave with him down like that? Okay, I can. I was like, uh, does it matter that my main character died? Okay, we're good. We're good. I've never seen Kalinor do that much damage to the main Taris character right there. So that's a little command. bit of a uh, new thing, no new encounter resistance. for me. The city is in ruins. Resume the bombardment, Commander. Wipe this pathetic planet from the face of the galaxy. Yeesh, you're evil. Fortunately for us, we escaped with our lives intact. This is the Ebon Hawk, one of the fastest ships in the galaxy, and a beloved, beloved icon in the KOTOR universe. But before we're in the clear, we have another mini game. I have to take care of these Sith fighters. They operate in the same pattern, so if I'm lucky, I should be able to take care of most of them. Ah, uh, dang, I did I did end up missing one. I usually kill... I usually only have two left. This time I had, I had three left. It's not the end of the world. It's more of an optimization thing than anything. For a marathon run, it happens. For PB attempts, I'm going to get a little bit more annoyed. 
one of the blessings of duration glitch the way the way where we keep stims for longer than we're supposed to is i walked off of terrace with four alacrity spits sp sp splits four alacrity stims which i can use here to walk to the jedi council chambers faster no matter what, I need to have one alacrity stim remaining ah, when I get to Manon so the one who for a particular Master. strat. Otherwise, a the other alacrity stims here. that we have, we it's have it's all for formality's sake. It's just efficient and faster, a member of but not Jedi. like a we oh no, I don't I don't have all these Master alacrity Vanda. stims. I'm and of course, my the Bruns the dead. It's not like that. So we're going to be recognized sure for our a great accomplishment. We rescued Bastila! Hooray! But, uh, well, we're just a lowly scout. We've we've done our due diligence. We helped the Republic. Guess we're, uh, we're gonna be on our way. Except something weird keeps happening. We have these dreams. These dreams of Darth Malak and some guy in a mask, or... I guess we don't know if it's a guy or not. Some individual in a mask? I think their name is Darth Revan. And apparently we share the same dream with Bastila. Oh, I wonder what the Jedi Council is going to decide, since we seem to be connected to Bastila for some strange reason. Bastila has told us of a most unusual development. She claims you and she have. Yeah, well, I guess it's none of my business. You have chosen but guess what? Difficult. The decision? Intensive we get to become a Jedi! Yay! They're like, well, the you're an adult, you but you seem to be connected to Bastila, so we're going to train you to be a Jedi. Understand the way of the Jedi. Enjoy this you training montage. This cutscene lasts for Seek like a minute and a half, two minutes. Would be a great master. time for donations. A Jedi is never alone. Others in the Order will always stand by you. You and Bastila share us. It will take a moment to acknowledge everyone uh, in the chat room right now. Hello train. to you guys. I hope you're enjoying uh, the video the and watching the, the process. It requires great discipline. Yet even though you are a mere apprentice, your potential is unlimited. Really? And your progress amazing. Oh my goodness. In all my years, I have never seen one who has mastered the initial training so quickly. Wow, I'm just built different. I've done in weeks what many cannot do in years. I guess I'm just I built different. Main character, uniquely gifted. Yeah, it makes sense. We're pretty awesome. Soon. But before we become a Jedi, I have to memorize the Jedi code, which is just uh, 1163264. Ah. Let me talk to uh, this guy. I forgot his name off the top of my head. Sorry. And we get to become a Jedi now. This is why we wait to do some of our level ups in order to dump all of our points into persuasion. We will want to use persuasion throughout the run. It makes certain parts of the game go much faster. It will also help us with our light side alignment. We do want to be light side aligned because we'll get some upgrades for our lightsaber that will make us really powerful. We get our own lightsaber and we're never gonna see it ever again. We're gonna use Bastila's lightsaber instead because it's way stronger. So sorry, Bastila, uh, we're using your lightsaber. Too bad. Force speed is a huge upgrade over alacrity stems, and it's much easier to use and have to having to use a bunch of stems all the time. Oh, I forgot to say hi to Nemo. Uh, say hi to Nemo, everybody. Nemo is our friend. Do you guys want to play Finding Nemo with me? That's always a fun game to play. So apparently, the the planes of that to Dantooine are going under. Uh, some rough times. I guess there's some dark side influence going on. So we need to get rid of the corruption. Wh whatever that, whatever that is. So we chose to become a Jedi Guardian. And we do that for a couple of reasons. One, it's more strength-based. But two, we get access to force jumping. As you saw on that last area, force jumping is pretty fast. Force jumping can be annoying sometimes because you'll try to target one enemy and your character will still be targeting another enemy and 
jump backwards. But overall, it's very fast. So the dark side influences this fallen Jedi named Juhani. Oh no! The Juhani fight can be pretty difficult. But we that's why we have stims. I use Force Valor to help with our stims. And along with some other stims that I had. So that way, along with the battle stim that I looted from the Mandalorian corpse I met. And so hopefully we'll be able to take care of her. I'm not hitting her very well. Come on now. I want to use Flurry when she flurries because her defense is down. That fight can go any number of ways. Like, you notice that I hit her for a lot of damage that first hit, but then struggled to hit her for the other hits? That's just RNG. But thanks to our persuasion, and we get access to force persuasion through the effect mind force power that I uh, took in one of my level ups to persuade Jahani to turn from the dark side and come back to the light side. And because of our good work, the Jedi Council thinks we're ready to go explore these ancient ruins that apparently Darth Malak and Revan explored. Not only can we transit back after Juhani because it's faster, but transiting back to this point is faster to get to the ruins. First things first, I do want to loot the Settler's Corpse to give us our headgear for the game, the Verpine Headband. I'll talk about the build at the end of Dantooine because we'll have all the equipment at that point. But just know that the we get about as good of equipment as we possibly can for where we're at in the run. I want to hug the wall here to skip a cutscene. We will not be very high level. We will end the game at level 12, and we're not going to go out of our way to get a lot of the equipment. Fortunately, we play on easy, so the enemies are a lot easier. So we have this weird droid, and this is one of the blessings yes. of having party members in solo mode. I will be yes. using each of the Jedi to activate the terminals. What can I do? And then T3 can go through the door once I've done them all. It's kind of a handy little optimization. Now, the dark side of having party members is hopefully they follow me. Remember how my main character got stuck before the Sith base? Well, that can happen when I have party members at any point in the run. So hopefully they'll be nice to me. Whoa, what is this? Some kind of artifact? Looks like some kind of map with stars. I wonder what that's all about. All right, will my party members follow me? All right, remember when we were playing Finding Nemo? Ooh, well, we found Nemo. Nemo died. However, looting his corpse gives us access to some really good equipment. So thanks, Nemo, for your contribution to speed. Now that we found the map, we can go back to the Jedi Council. And guess what? That was not the only star map that we need to find. Apparently, there's like five of them across the galaxy. We're going to have to find all of them in order to stop Darth Malak and his evil plan. Ah, you have returned, young Padawan. Have you discovered what it was that Revan and returned to your ship with Bastila, and we will summon you? In order to get off Dantuin quickly, we're going to utilize our transit warps again. We can transit right away to the Ebon Hawk anytime we're out in the field like this. Well, there's some places you can't, but when we can, we we do. But before going to our first planet, we're going to upgrade our lightsaber with the sigil crystal we got from Nemo. We also want to equip his Jedi robes because they're the best defense we can have. And Jedi robes allow us to use force powers. A lot of, uh, a lot of armor doesn't let you use force powers. We also want to use the Adrenaline Belt. That helps with some save throws. And I believe the Verpine Headband helps with some accuracy stuff. Or I, might, I might have gotten the Belt and the Headband mixed up. I always get those two mixed up for some reason. 
um, but Lord it's Mark, essentially the best build that we can have at this point in the game capacity. and we Bobby have all of our end game equipment from now on the like the strength gauntlets we'll be keeping on that nerve enhancement package we already equipped we'll keep on the robes the lightsaber other than some upgrades we are ready to go we have all the end game equipment we need of the republic and a legendary soldier during the mandalore wars he was honored many times for his bravery and take a quick water break yes lord malak he served under me when i still followed the republic you could say I was his mentor. Interesting. How did you acquire this information, Admiral? An eyewitness, Lord Malak. Eyewitness? What? Callow Nord survived? No Nord, a bounty way. Was there when I don't believe this. Escaped the planet. A Cal's and after us. Cal's presence is actually a good time to it's talk about the planet routing encounter. we do in the speed run. Kill Lord Malak. We are intentional about our planets that we go to. We're going to start with Manan for a couple of reasons. One, we are still low level. We're level six at this point in the run. We will have very little combat on Manan, and our skill checks aren't going to be very demanding on Manan. So this planet is a great way to get experience and a level up and close to a second level up without having to do any combat or have any checks. The other reason it's nice to do Manon first is after the, well, technically it's the second and fourth star map if you're including the Dantooine star map, there will be some boss fights we have to do. If you go to Korriban first or third, you'll encounter one of those boss fights and you can't transit back to the Ebonhawk, which is a lot slower. But if you do Manon and Tatooine, we can just, uh, well, let's just say the boss fights are very easy if you do them on Manon and Tatooine. I want to take T3 with me, mostly because if I'm alone, a cutscene will play, and if I bring any other party members, a cutscene will play. So taking T3 with us skips a cutscene. Yeah, what? Are you and oh boy, the Republic and the Sith are yelling at each other. Manan is a very interesting planet. But before I get to that, I want to buy two hyper alacrities and three hyper strength stims. In order to compensate for our low level, we will be using hyper stims a lot of the run. So if you're wondering how we can get by with the equipment and the level that we have, hyper stims and force powers are the way to go. But Manan is trying to stay neutral in the war between the Republic and the Sith. They are manufacturers of Koltol, this healing substance, and they want to sell it equally to both sides. But since we are a Jedi, and it is faster to be light side aligned, we are going to work with the Republic. Long story short, the Republic lost some important data, and they need us to recover it, and it's in the Sith base. So we need to break into the Sith base and recover these codes and then they're going to help us find the, our star map, which apparently we saw in a vision or a dream is underwater. Oops. All right, T3 was a great party member. Everybody say thank you to T3. Thank you, T3. We're going to remove him because once we go to the Sith base, we will get into combat. And party members are no no for combat because they will make us go slower. Just like stims, forest powers can also duration glitch. We have a pretty good understanding of how the timings work for our force powers. So I want to reapply force speed there because I knew it was going to run out. And it will also duration glitch until the next point I need to reapply it, which is pretty handy. Now we are in the Sith base. Fortunately, the codes are not very far into the base. However, the Sith are not happy that we are here. They want to kill me really bad. Pretty typical. I have to use a couple med packs here. If I take a lot of damage, I might have to use two, because you can take a ton of damage on the way out. Fortunately, just the standard two will be fine.
Not too bad, not too bad. That said, we are going to get arrested. And I have to be very careful with this dialogue sequence. If you don't do that right, you condemn yourself and you die and the run is over. So I got to be really careful there. It's the same co it's it's the same sequence every time. I just have to be careful of that. So the Selkath politicians or the judges are like, um, you can't break into the base. That's illegal. And we're like, we're sorry. And we get a slap on the wrist and we get put on probation. Hopefully we don't further incur the wrath. It would be a tragedy if we were to get banned or something like that. Surely that won't happen. Regardless of getting arrested, we've obtained the codes and now it's time to go underwater. Apparently, the Republic built a secret cultal mining facility with some of the Selkath that were like, bro, the Sith are evil. Do not work with them. We will help you get an advantage. And uh, we're going to see how that goes right now. Turns out, all the Selkath went crazy. And they're attacking and killed everybody. This next area is, uh, pretty quiet. We're just gonna walk through a bunch of Selkath. I am gonna take a good amount of damage, but I have a specific point that I like to med pack at. Now, the reason I kept that al one alacrity stem for this point in the run is I'm going to grab this environmental suit. We're going to go underwater, and going underwater is cool and all. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Ow. The good news is if you have... Oh, my goodness. That was really close. Whew. All right, I took that a little bit close for comfort, but that's okay. We're fine. <laughs> Whew. If you come out here without an alacrity sim and four speed on, this environmental suit moves very slow. If you have the alacrity sim and activate four speed, you get a 70% movement increase or speed increase, which is way better than none. <laughs> Now, this guy said he knows what he's doing and we should follow him. Oh, angry killer sharks. He forgot about the killer angry sharks. One of the reasons we looted that footlocker back there is to get the sonic emitter. These Feroxa are angry and want to eat us. The sonic emitter, which we can use from our inventory, will kill them instantly. If you don't use a sonic emitter from your inventory, you have to go through a little animation, and that's slow. We don't like slow. Yeah, I wish I could speed this part of the run up, but that's not going to happen. Do, 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 do. I think I'm gonna use a med pack here, even though I, I, I'm 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 fine, but I just want to be safe. So the reason we come here is we discover there are some scientists who are like, "Help! Everyone's dying!" And in the process, they're like, "We're gonna kill you too!" We're like, "Bro!" Oh, I got the unlucky thing. If you're quick enough, you can just click on the force seal, but sometimes uh, they'll try to poison you anyway, and you just get stunned. So long story short, the reason the Selkath went crazy is they disturbed the environment of the Feroxa by building this cultal mining facility, which is a bruh moment. So in order to fix the issue, we're going to shut down the cultal control panel. This is the rite of passage for KOTOR speedrunners. You have to memorize a combination. It's one, two, four, two, five, four, five, two, five. I have it on my notes, but I don't think I need them. One, two, four, two, five, four, five, two, five. 
Don't ask me what the lore is. I just know the numbers. By doing so and shutting down the Colto mining facility, the evil shark, big shark is like, nah, bro, we chill now. Don't have to fight them. We can move on. And we get access to the star map. So for the rest of Manan, I will be walking back to the submarine. This is a great time for donation reading because I'm just going to be walking in this submar er, submarine scuba suit. Do, do, do. I have a couple seconds, so hello to anyone that's joining in chat again. Good to have you here. And unfortunately, there's really not much else I can do to go faster here. <laughs> we have a $5 donation from T3. Who says beep boop beep bop beep boop? Thanks, T3. Uh, as we get to this next area, I'm gonna do my level up. We're gonna increase our persuasion skill to 10 and get the dominate mind force power and improve flurry, which is helpful for our, our DPS. But it's very important. That I get dominate. Come on, dominate mind and ten persuasion because we're, we're, our next planet is going to be Korriban, and Korriban has some pretty tight persuasion checks. So by getting that, we can we just have enough to get through what we needed to do. Oh no, Cal Nord's here. Uh, we're just gonna run past him. Goodbye, Cal. The hilarious thing about just skipping Kalo is he gets reported as dead. So I guess we killed Kalo according to the story. <laughs> Even though we just run by him. We caused a whole bunch of hoopla down there. And the Selkath are not fans of it. But don't worry, guys. Let's put our per force persuasion to good use. Let's persuade the Selkath government to let us go free. I'm sure that's going to work out great for us. Uh, spoiler alert, it doesn't work out so great for us. They figure out that we use the force on them and they get mad and we get banned. We actually cannot come back here ever again. I love that part of the game. You can get banned from Manon permanently. <laughs> but we're not going back to Manon, so who cares? Instead, it's time to go to Korriban. We're going to do Corban alone. As I mentioned, we do want to be light side aligned. There are a couple of dark side actions that we do take. Part of why we wanted the persuasion skills that we have no. is to stop this guy from killing these uh, people. That gives us a lot of light side points. We will take a dark side action to advance faster in Corban. But otherwise, we'll be doing light side actions. Really, the only dark side actions you take is to get T3 for free and uh, turn in Kel in the academy. And that's Lashou. She's the she's a bully. But we're going to ignore her. For now, it's time to sell stuff. Don't sell the computer spikes. That would be bad. We're going to sell a lot of stuff. Pretty much everything but stims and healing items because we are going to buy all of the... Uh, healing items and hyper stims that we can because that will keep us alive and be the fastest for combat. I now have all the healing items I need to survive the rest of the run. I also have all the stims I need, barring a couple exceptions, to go as fast as I can in combat. Like I said, we'll use those hyper stims to compensate for our low level. Well, as we try to get into the Sith Academy, they're going to deny us. Very sad. Hello, Lane, by the way. Good to see you. Well, we get denied entrance into the academy. Fortunately, we are going to try to uh, 
provoke the good favor of Euthura to get us in. I do have to do a safety save here Is because this, this persuasion conversation can fail. It works a majority of the time, but you can fail it. And if you fail it, you have to do a very long alternative to get inside. It's very not good. So Euthura brings us in because she's like, hey, you know what? I think you have what it takes to help me kill Uthar, the master of the academy, because I want to be the master of the academy. And we're like, uh, okay. So way, the way that Korriban works is we have to accumulate favor with Uthar win. The way we're going to do that is by helping Lasho, who has his holocron, even though she's going to betray, betray us, and we're going to win, obviously. We're going to turn in Kel, and we're going to recite the Sith Code, which is a very long sequence of dialogue options, but don't worry, I do have a cheat sheet, because no one should have to memorize 12 numbers. The other issue is there are there are there is one part of that conversation that has variable answers. So you have to be you have to pay attention. Okay, these are Shyrax. Shyrax are a double-edged sword. You can jump to them on the way back to the academy, but sometimes they spawn in really bad spots. So hopefully the Shyrax will be nice to me. Now it's time to show off essentially our combat uh system for the rest of the game. Force Valor, Hyper Alacrity, Hyper Stamina, Hyper Strength, and either the Achani or Hyper Battle Stim, there you and then Flurry. This is the fastest way to do combat in the game. Or the, the, the way that we get the most damage with the level that we have. When I got my level up, we want 20, and then I want Energy Resistance. We also got 9 and Treat Injury to help with healing items. Getting the Strength attributes helpful because, like I said... Strength helps with accuracy and damage. All right, we got her in two rounds. That's pretty good. Sometimes the show doesn't want to get hit, and it's really slow and sad. So it looks like the Shyrak, at least this one's being nice to me. Thank you, Shyrak. Sometimes the Shyraks can spawn right next to the Sith Academy, and that's the biggest problem. Because if there's an enemy close to you, you can't warp. And we do want to warp out of Korriban from the Sith Academy by coming back to this area. So if there's a Shyrak there, we have to kill it and they're hard to hit because our level is still pretty low. All right, we got the Holocron. We're going to turn Kel in and it's time to recite the code. So I will be a little quiet. That way I can, uh, and I do all this dialogue. Tell me then, true or false? <laughs> that was a variable one I had to make sure. So we convinced Uthar that we're legit, and now it's time to go to the Tomb of Naga Sado. This is where the star map is. We don't care about becoming a Sith. We just want to get the star map and get out of Tell here. That. Now, Uthar thinks we're going to become the super cool Sith and get our lightsaber or something like that. We don't need that. We don't want our red lightsaber. It's worse than our weapon anyway. That's not fast. And we like speed in the speed run. One of the nice advantages of coming to Korriban second is it will give us access to a really powerful lightsaber upgrade. The main reason we want to be light side aligned is to use an upcoming crystal we're gonna get called the Solari Crystal. It does a lot of extra damage against dark side opponents. And it's just overall really powerful. We have to get the ice grenade to stop an acid pit. So we can cross it and get our lightsaber. There's a crystal. I just gotta walk to the star map now. And avoid the raids. Ow. Rude. Here's the acid pool. Frozen grenade gets us over that. And here's the star map. 
unfortunately i wish it this this was it it was that easy we do have to fight uthar and he can be a little annoying we won't die but he can be annoying put force valor on to help with that and you throw it oh the raid decided oh. to yes the raid can just like be here oops i actually like, canceled my combat this goes well the worst part is uthar can heal himself and that's bad okay Woo. So now we've done what we needed. We get some light side points by sparing Euthura. I am going to heal here because, ow, they, they can't hurt. One thing I have to talk about is I have a donation incentive to buy HK-47. We do not get HK-47 in the speed run, but I have a donation incentive in mind where I would buy HK and show off some of his very fun dialogue. In order to get enough credits, I would loot Uthar's body, but we don't need the credits otherwise, so I just ignore his body. But that would be one very slight deviation to Korriban is looting Uthar's corpse uh, if I were to do that donation incentive. All right, so this Shyrak... Ooh, I couldn't jump to him. Force jumping can be annoying because if there's even, like, a slight... some slight angle off from your line of sight or, like, a rock or something that stops you, well, that can go really bad. Now, hopefully, the Shyrax won't respawn next to the Sith Academy, or I am in big trouble. Okay, whew. Can warp to the Ebonhawk. So, we are done with Korriban. I'm going to upgrade our lightsaber. Oops. With the Solari Crystal. We are moving on. One thing I need to mention about KOTOR... KOTOR is a, a fickle beast. Every time you do a save and a load, or load into another zone, the game leaks memory. And if the game leaks too much memory, it crashes. If we beat the game in under two hours, we don't have to worry about crashes. But it's a marathon run, and so I'm going to do the safety strat. I will save my game on the Ebon Hawk on Tatooine, and exit and reload the game. That resets the memory. That will stop any memory crashes. Bounty hunter can stand against a Jedi. I shall not make the same mistake again. My apprentice, Darth Bandon, shall take care of our young Jedi friend. This would be another good time for donations. I do have to point out... Malak called this guy Darth Bandon? Whoa, edgy. But let's be real, his name is Darth Brandon. We call him Darth Brandon around these parts. I think this is the same guy that killed Trask. So we can get our revenge. And bring her to me, alive if possible. As you command, Master. Whoa, scary. Okay, once Bastila talks to us, we can save and quit. Save, exit the game. We come to Tatooine third for a couple of reasons. One, uh, spoiler alert, we're going to fight Darth Brandon. Second, and, and we can just exit Tatooine like we did for Kalo on Manan. Welcome. The other reason we come to Tatooine third is there's a lot more combat. And now we're getting a little bit stronger and can start to take on some of these enemies with a lot more ease. We also got those stims on Korriban so we can fight the enemies a lot easier. That guy we just talked to is going to give us Giska. Big oof. Big yikes. We don't like Giska. They ruin our movement on the Ebon Hawk. But we keep them around anyway. In order to exit Anchorhead, I have to agree to killing sand people. Uh, did I? I did that, right? I had to do an extra dialogue menu. I think my brain just stopped, but I, I think I got, I'm pretty sure I got the license.
All right, some Dark Jedi want to attack me. Hopefully they don't stun me. It's very rare, but they can force power me. So if I were to do the donation incentive to buy HK-47, I would go into this shop and I would talk to Yukalaka and I could buy HK and he has some really funny dialogue. It's well worth it. No one. Yeah, they get the license. The sp speedrunners do a pretty good job of having like dial like the dialogue numbers memorized. The one drawback by just memorizing numbers is you forget the content. So let's say you accidentally press the wrong key. You have to know how to navigate the conversation to get back on track. I'm very fortunate that I played the game casually recently, so I have a pretty good understanding of the lore and how to get to the conversation points I need in case I mess up. I'm walking in a line like this very specifically. There are some sand people mobs that can come out of nowhere and attack you, but if you take that line, you can avoid all of them. It's not the end of the world, but it's it's a cutscene and it loses time. All right, we need to kill one of the sand people to get a couple of items. We'll use our handy dandy stims and force valor. Come on now. We also get level nine. Oops, I want 10 in. Uh, I also want to grab night speed. Night speed is a very, very important force power to get. The reason you want force speed is it adds an extra attack roll to every flurry that I oops do. So instead of doing three hits per flurry, I do four hits. That's a lot of DPS. A lot more DPS. I want to equip the Sand People costume to go incognito and get past these turrets and all the Sand People. Then we're going to re-equip our Jedi robes and uh, go invade their home. I wish I could say it nicer, but uh, we're, we're being kind of jerks. We got to kill the Chieftain to advance the, the plot of the game. So sorry, everybody. I have to kill your leader. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. So we kill the Tuscan Chieftain, uh, which is actually what HK-47 would do. We don't need to have him translate anything. <laughs> Now we can move on. I wanted to use force speed before I entered that one loading zone, the one that we first entered over there, because it duration glitches um, a little bit. That way I can, I can use, sometimes force speed will last me the rest of the time uh, through this next area, or at least past the combat. Spoiler alert, we're gonna go into another combat uh, on, on this next area. But it's really nice to have night speed at this point because a lot of those Tuscans, when they start hitting you, it's a lot of damage. It's helpful to not have to deal with it. So in the vision that we got, the star map's in some cave. Unfortunately, the star map is protected by a crate dragon. And uh, crate dragons are big and they are scary. If you are smart, you will be afraid of the crate dragon. If you're... If you're this guy up here, you have a different take on the crate dragon, as you will see shortly. I'm tired of waiting, Comad. How big can this dragon of yours be? I'm going in. I love this guy. I love the voice acting. How big can this dragon of yours be? Like, not to worry about it. Just goes in and immediately gets eaten. <laughs> All right, bro. Nice. So Comad's like, hey, I just lost my partner. Do you want to help me with my actual smart plan? We say yes. The reason we killed that sand person at the beginning was to get the role or his outfit to skip uh, fighting those enemies. And we got some bantha fodder, which the bantha like to eat. And so they're, they're going to follow us. We're going to use the bantha to kill the crate dragon. Unfortunately, the sand people do not take too kindly to us stealing their livestock. Oops. 
Now, so if you look at my flurry, you should see four numbers come up. Well, that was only two because I killed them. Yeah, see, I had four numbers. Yeah, really, really nice. So you got to kill those guys, and now we can take the bandos back to Coleman, and we are ready to kill the crate dragon. Shoutouts to the Mandalorian Season 2 for replicating the scene, more or less. Using explosions and Bantha to drop the crate Dragon. Alright. All right, for our reward, we get a crate Dragon Pearl, which is really nice. That's going to be our final upgrade to our lightsaber. All right. It is time to get the star map. But first, I need to loot this Twi'lek corpse to get a very important belt called the Neural Belt. Their nerve amplifier belt, actually. And I'm going to use it on Karth in just a little bit. Also, Jams, thank you for the seven months. I appreciate the reset. I'm doing a recording right now. Hello. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, we're hanging out. We're doing we're doing this no reset run. We're teaching people about KOTOR. We got some people vibing in Twitch too, which is really, really nice. So welcome back from Hawaii. I'm not sure why the alert is delayed. Oh no! It's Darth Brandon. He wants to kill us. Well, just like Kalinor, we're just gonna I we're think gonna you're just the go fake away. Hedgehog around here. Guess who's back from underwater and is now in Hawaii? That is goofy. I wonder why that alert was so late. Anyhow, we walk past Darth Brandon and it's time to leave. Once we exit the, to this area, we can warp back to the Ebonhawk and we are home free. However, I am going to do kind of a very interesting strat. I'm going to bring Candorus into my party. And I'm going to put a Hyper Alacrity stem on Candorus. The reason for that is we're about to get whisked away to a new location called the Leviathan. And we have to use one of our party members to uh, help us jailbreak. And Candorus is the most helpful party member, or the, the I should say the fastest. I'm giving him a Hyper Alacrity stem to increase his movement speed by 30%. But before we do so, gotta do the Create Dragon Pearl. And now we are ready for the end game. Well, I mean, this isn't the end game per se, but we're ready to go. On our way to Kashyyyk, though, we get usurped. Oh no! Sith interdictor ship. They must have been waiting for us in the hyperspace. I do have to say, if you have not played this game before, we're getting into massive spoiler territory. Just want to throw that out there. But as you will discover, the main character, Parth and Basil, will get captured, and one of our other party members is going to have to help us out. Candorus is really cool here. Candorus essentially makes himself in a near-death situation so that they think he's dead. And then he uses his healing stims to get back to full health and rescues us. Kind of insane. Oh boy. Leviathan is a very difficult part of the speedrun. Mainly because we are forced to have party members. Parth and Bastila are required to have with you and remember how i was saying remember that party members won't uh you won't be able to travel to different zones unless you have your party members close enough well there's a lot of enemies on leviathan and your party members can get into combat when you don't want to when we were just solo we could walk past all we want because we just had to worry about ourselves but not on leviathan not on leviathan so I have a very specific way of doing this this part of the game. But yeah, Candorus is moving faster because of the stim. These Sith soldiers are not going to do enough damage to harm us. Grab the codes we need. It's time to get our party members out of there. So in this first area, oddly enough, I don't need to have my party members with me. So I can just do solo mode and go to the elevator. But after that, I will need my party members with me. We'll use four speed, gotta re-equip 
our main character. Want to auto level them. That way they have some extra stats. It doesn't really matter what their auto level becomes. So sometimes your party members don't want to follow you properly. The way to navigate that is by doing a save and a load. That sometimes resets it and makes it easier to for your party members to follow you. Something I've noticed is when you have force speed on and your party members are not in combat and are close to you, they kind of move along with the force speed. If they get in combat or are too far away from you, they walk normally. So what I want to do first is I want to hug this wall and hopefully the Sith Guard will not fire. Okay, usually he doesn't. So see, I saw my party members and we're moving along. That's part one. If I get into combat with that guy, that's really slow. Part two is we're going to have to get past some Dark Jedi to get to the bridge. Wow, I didn't one-shot this door. Usually I one-shot that door. We got to go to space. Unfortunately, some Dark Jedi like to block our way, and hopefully my party members follow me. Okay, they're following me. And they can be really nasty. Wow, I got poisoned twice. That's kind of unfortunate. Fortunately, the poison debuff doesn't stay on. I'm here. All right, we are on the space bridge. I want to make sure my party members are following me for a very specific reason. This part of the game has ruined my run before. <laughs> I wish I could speed this up. This door has broke on me before. I have gone through this door and ended up on back to where I started. <laughs> In some really bizarre glitch. It's happened to me several times. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Oh, uh, it's really funny if it does happen, though. I just have to reload a safety save, but it's 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 uh, really painful and a lot of time loss. So I have some history with this airlock door. So please work. Please, oh, please work. Nobody but me has to worry about this. Okay, phew. We are good. So I'll, for some reason, the that area unequips all of our items. So I want to make sure I, I equip the belt on Karth. I activate solo mode so that they stay in that area and don't take as much damage from the enemies in that room. I don't care about Bastila having a weapon. I just want Karth to have some ranged weapons on. So this is the Admiral Karath fight. This fight can be pretty tricky. The strat is to kill the Dark Jedi first because they can give you a debuff. And then we'll kill Karath because Admiral Karath does a lot of damage to us. So we apply Night Speed and now it's time to take on Karath. He has a shield so he limits our damage a lot. Oh, wow, that was a really good hit. I just have to finish these guys off. I have to open these doors from that terminal. I just do it when I'm right there so I don't have to walk back to it after the cutscene. Pretty handy little strat. Oh, Basila, usually both my party members died, but Basila is holding her own pretty well. One more bed pack. All right, not bad, not bad. Your stims and force powers can run out really easily, so I'm pretty particular with when I use my stims and force powers. Otherwise, I will run out of them, and it makes uh, Leviathan go very slow. This next area, I'm gonna use the this transition trigger. I'm gonna move the main character into a corner, and then I equip Parth with an alacrity stim and move him close. And then if I move, use Bastille to get in combat there, my party members are close enough to the loading zone that I can go forward. Now, my stims and force speed should duration glitch at this point, which is great. Because they can run out really easily, and it's not the end of the world, but it makes the rest of Leviathan a little less consistent. 
I want to wait for my party members. No, watch them. See how they kind of do a little, little uh, walk thing. Now they will follow me with the force speed. I, I noticed that though. When they kind of do that little walk, that means they're close enough. I want to make sure I walk here because sometimes they'll stop in this hallway and there are enemies in that hallway and Carl will just be like, ooh, 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 enemies to kill, enemies to kill. I don't like when that happens. Then I lose time. Oh, card. Okay. Whew. I thought card did something weird. Put my enemy or my enemies, my allies closer. That way they should be in here with me. You have to have both of your party members in the elevator to move on. We want to get our master two weapon fighting and night valor. That's going to be really good for our DPS. I haven't gone over a lot of the feats. Just know that I get feats that maximize my ability to use two-handed weapons, flurry, and then force powers. It's it's night speed and, and force valor. We'll also get energy resistance later on, which is helpful to protect against some late game force powers. That's really all you need to know. I also put a, an 11th point into Persuasion. We do want to get 13 Persuasion. That will help with the conversation later on. But forget that. It's time to confront Darth Malak himself. The evil Sith Lord. The most evil person in the galaxy who's alive. We've been following Darth Revan and Darth Malak's footsteps the whole time. We don't really know what happened to Darth Revan. But wait. Wait, who's that? Could it be? Who is Darth Revan really? It's us! We're Darth Revan! Oh my gosh, my brain! I can't believe it! This plot twist was legitimately one of the greatest plot twists I've ever experienced. It blew my mind. Remember when Master Zar was like, Man, you're really gifted! And you did this training so well! Yeah, that's because we're Darth Revan! We are one of the greatest Jedi slash Sith force users of all time. No wonder we're good at the initial training. Essentially, Bastila incapacitated us because Darth Malak also fired and betrayed Revan, and they reprogrammed his memory and created a new persona, which we made in the character uh, selection screen. Kind of a wild and beautiful way to do a plot twist. So we re-equip our force powers and stims and all that so we can run around Malak. And, uh, but Malak's about to kill us. Oh, but Bastila is going to save the day. I'll hold Malak off. You two get out of here. Find oh, the no. Bastila's going to take on no! Malak alone. She she can't do that. Oh, no. I hope she'll be okay. Well, we got to honor her sacrifice and find the final star map so we can start, stop Darth Malak once and for all. Before we escape, I get the Sith Fighter minigame again. So we got a Blast Morph ships. Time for some pew pew. Alright, that actually went well. Hooray. Much better than the first one. Nice. And our whole party members are like, holy crap, you're Darth Revan. What? And everyone's like, Eh, you're you're just you. We like you for who you are. And then Karth's like, I don't trust you. <laughs> it's okay. Car Karth has seen some 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 tough stuff. We can give Karth a break, I think. And he comes around at the end anyway. It is time to go to Kashyyyk, our final planet, to finding the star maps. We come to Kashyyyk last, uh, mostly. Because we do have some combat that's that's good to just be more geared up for. But the star map requires us to go through like a computer's test. But if we, once we find out we're Darth Revan, we can be like, yo, we're Darth Revan. And the computer's like, oh, okay, here you go. So it skips a pretty long sequence in the run. We also get to meet this guy. That guy invites us to some secret, like, assassins organization. Oh, yeah. We're not going to do that. But if you do the quest line casually, it is pretty cool.
I bought some extra stims, and we're going to do Hyper Strength, Hyper Battle, and Force Valor. Because there are some enemies I want to kill in this area. You can skip most of the enemies, but there are some that I need to kill. The reason is, we're going to get our final party member, Joe Lee. And Joe Lee will get into combat on the way back to the, to the Ebon Hawk. But, fortunately, that guy that we just met, that Twi'lek... He's going to reappear to us and warp Jolie to us when we come back to this area. But Jolie can get aggro to some of these uh, enemies if they're too close. So we just kill them for safety. So we're going to really use force jump here. I'm going to be doing a pretty quick set of inputs every jump. I'm going to be using flurry, cancel, and then my default action for attack. That is because there is something in the game called wire jumping where if you don't kill an enemy or you get aggro to an enemy or a particular mob if you try to jump to like another enemy farther away the game will say no i'm fighting these people right next to me and yeah and and the game says no you're gonna attack them instead so by canceling the combat we get out of that interaction and can jump to other enemies freely it's very nice shout out to sanjin for finding that strat I hope you guys aren't too attached to Zalbar because we're going to leave him behind. We have to come to the Wookiee village to get permission to go to the Shadowlands. Uh, the Wookiee in charge is evil. He's like, you got to kill this awful person who's actually his father. But we get permission to go down there and we can find the star map. So that's all we really care about. Yeah, we're even though we're light side aligned, we don't really care much about the fate of people in the glitchless category. It's all in the name of speed. We'll do some horse jumps. Nice. Oops. Ah, that was an example of wire jump. Jumping happening. See, I tried to attack that one guy, but I instead attacked the other other mob. Yeah, that's just the reality of the run sometimes. I also looted that wicker bin, I should mention. That has an extra alacrity stem, which is really nice, because we use the one on Karth. In the old route, we used to not loot that alacrity stem, and it was not enough stems to use one on Karth, but now we can. I love that you can just skip that combat, by the way. It's really funny. All right. Time to go to the, sh under to the lower Shadowlands. So this area can be very punishing. There's a lot of enemies and they can kind of clutter around you. The way to go fast here is to have really good force jumps. That can be difficult if you don't do the inputs correctly. The other thing that you're limited to is enemy position, which is randomized. If the enemies line up nice, well, great, it's easy to jump. But if they're uh, lined up not so nice, you uh, may not be able to be very efficient. We get to meet Jolie now. Jolie is the final party member we'll be getting, and he is a gray Jedi. He leans to the light, but he doesn't mind dabbling in the dark. I love Jolie as a character. I love the concept of the gray Jedi. Ooh. Yeah, see how those guys block me? That's kind of unlucky placement. So Jolie is like, hey, get rid of these Zerka guys killing the tack, and I'll help you. Well, we're going to agree to kill the attack for these guys and then get rid of them. The reason we're going to make the attack aggressive towards us is so we can force jump to them. Oh, that's weird. I, I like got caught on that guy as I was trying to use the uh, shut down the Zerka Sonic device. Because when we shut down the Zerka devices, the Tenderac will attack them and cause them to go away. Hooray! Run, run. We saved the environment once again. Even though we're going to... Kill tack anyway for speed. Maybe it's more appor uh, appropriate to say that we're uh, we're speed aligned, not light or dark side aligned. We do what's in the name of speed, which just happens to be light side most of the time. Pretty slick jumps of those tack. Now that we got rid of those guys, Jolie will help us. Which is kind of a old man, but his backstory is actually really cool. And the reason he helps us in the first place is essentially to make sure Darth Revan doesn't destroy the galaxy. On our way to the force field. Yeah, there's a force field that stops us from progressing unless Jolie is with us. And that is where the star map is. So far, the enemies are lining up pretty nice. Oh, 
Yeah, that's an example. See, I tried to jump to that tack, but the other one was close. I didn't do the inputs. So I was trying to be lazy, and that, that's what I get. Whoa! I was not expecting to jump back to that one. I thought I was far enough away where I didn't have to worry about it. Ooh, and my... My stims ran out. I'll use a strength stim here. Actually, I can use a battle stim, too. Uh, my Usually, my stims... A duration glitch, but this time they didn't. So I'll just have to use some backups. I do have to go through a combat because I can leave Jolie in that area, but there are some Kinrath coming up that I have to kill. Otherwise, Jolie will get aggro to them and I have to deal with it. And they can kill Jolie, which would be not good. So I'm just going to kill him on my own because I'm powerful enough to do so. Yeah, sometimes your force speed and stims can run out there. Usually the duration glitch. But I think some of the awkward force jumps caused my timer to run out. I use Force Valor to help us out. Ooh, got the one round. Usually it takes two rounds to kill these guys, but that guy killed in one, so nice. All right, time to get to the computer. And instead of doing the computer's test, we get to claim where Darth Revan and computer's gonna say, okay, cool. And now we've got the final star map, and it is time to get ready to go to the Star Forge and stop Malik once and for all. Well. Alright. Time to level up 12 in persuasion. We'll get Master Flurry to really help our DPS out. And Force Resistance to help... Ooh, Jolie, Jolie, Jolie. Can you stay with me, my friend? Yeah, Jolie can get caught on things. You want to make sure he stays close. Otherwise, uh... It's a lot of time loss. Let's see he gets caught on that stump and doesn't follow you. You have to wait for him to walk all the way over to you. Not fun. Not very fun. Especially if you're on PB pace. I'm just going to be walking back to my ship at this point. So for the rest of the lower Shadowlands, this would be a pretty good time for donation readings. At least for a few of them. I do have one strat I'll talk about near the end, but we got time for a few. Really all we're going to do is force jump. We do put Jolie in solo mode because we don't need him with us to talk to the Wookiee. The trick with the Wookiee at the elevator is you have to not be in combat and the enemies can't be too close to you. That's where it gets problematic because that first area has a lot of enemies cluttered all around it. Wow, I'm, my force speed usually doesn't run out there. That is very interesting. The way that I get around this is I like to hug the wall here. I unfortunately got lucky with the enemies being grouped in that area. And so I should be able to just talk to Gorwukin and go back up. Sometimes the enemies will be closer to the stump and they will stop you from talking to the Wookiee and you have to, you have to end up fighting them instead. I don't have to take Jolie with me because that guy that we like at the beginning of Kashyyyk is going to be there to greet us and that will warp Jolie to us automatically. One thing I forgot to mention is I set a transit point in the Wookiee village because once we go back to the Zerka platform, I'm going to transit back to the Wookiee village and back to the ship because it's faster than walking to the ship. Here's the cutscene I was telling you about. He's like, you want to join? And we're like, nah, nah, dude. And Jolie doesn't get into combat. And we're, hooray! I see you every day, speedrunner. Now that we have all the star maps, it is time to go to the Star Forge. We have a bunch of unskippable cutscenes, including Bastila getting tortured. This would be a great time for donations. 
but I will break you. I'll never fall to the dark side. <coughs> you think torture will turn me, Malik? You are a fool. Torture? No, dear Bastula. You misunderstand. This Ugh. is what it Ugh, takes creepy. The dark side. I ate it. I ate it. Your appetite. Arth when Malik is creepy. Loyalty to me, it will be willingly. Never. We have a $20 donation from HK47 who says, Commentary. But this is fast. Or a meat bag. The dark side calls to you, Bastula. You if you haven't seen HK47's best moments, I recommend it. HK47 is my favorite character. I'm very sad that we don't get him in the speed run, but it is very slow. But he has some very memorable quotes. The Starforge. I've never seen anything like it. I'm transmitting these coordinates to Admiral Dodonna. Maybe a quick strike by the Republic can cripple the Sith fleet. Messages away. So Revan actually gets one line of dialogue in the game. We should be safe here. We're outside their sense I'm gonna range. I'm gonna voice act it. What's that? Small vanguard of Sith fighters coming in hard. Someone needs to Oh get boy, our third and final time taking on Sith fighters. Badly. It's the same as the first two times, but the game makes us do it. Ooh, that was quick. Nice. Oh, we've got problems. We've flown into some kind of disruptor field. Oh, All my crud. We've got disruptor field. I'm picking up a single planet in this system. I'll try and put us down there. Hold on. This may be a rough One line. thing I forgot to mention. You might be wondering, Seraphim, where are all the movies to the games? There is an option in the game, or in, in like the settings, that you can disable movies, and that's just faster. So we land on this planet, and we're stranded. Apparently, some, there's some kind of disruptor field that happened. that caused our ship to crash. We need to disable it. Maybe these locals will help us out. Oh, gosh, you're hostile. Yeah, the locals don't like us. These are the Rakata. The Rakata are an ancient race that used to dominate the galaxy. They had this very bloodthirsty empire. And some of them want to uh, recreate that. Gonna stem right here. So moral of the story, the young Rakata said, hey, we want to remake the empire and make it bloodthirsty again. And there are some elders who are like, dude, we saw the, the old empire destroyed everything that we loved and cared for. We don't want to do that. We're going to side with the Elders. It's faster. Now, the one trick to this area... ...is we have to talk to the Elder without getting into combat. I cannot get hit by anyone. Hopefully, this Rancor that's in the cell will come out. Sometimes the Rancor don't want to come out. Okay, we didn't get hit. It's usually consistent. I mean, if you get hit, you just have to run around for a few seconds for the for it to go away. But it is very um, depressing to get hit. I do have to grab the ship parts so we can restore the hyperdrive. Otherwise, we can't continue. Very important to grab those. Now we're just going to jump on out of here. The Rakata will sometimes line up really nice for us. Oh, this is pretty decent lineup so far. Ooh, usually the one that's in this area hides behind, like, the table or something, so to be able to get that one in particular is really nice. Ah, there's too many, and I didn't get... I, I didn't wire jump. I'm also... Uh, my force speed's not duration glitching very well, which can be problematic. Overall, pretty good. So this next area, I just need to walk to the elders. Boo, this guy walked behind the rock. I can't force jump to him. He's being mean. This probably means that my force speed is going to run out again.
it's not a huge problem, but if my four speed doesn't duration glitch, right, uh, then I have no force power, and then I have to just rely on the 30% movement speed from the alacrity stem, which is much slower than the 50% movement speed. But it looks like a duration glitch, so we're good. The other nice thing is when you're out of combat, your force points regenerate. So usually it's never a problem, but there is a small chance you don't have enough force power to keep your night speed through the planet. Oh, if you're sensitive to Giska violence, look away now. Ooh, that's kind of smart. I know they infested our ship and made it harder to get around, but no Giska deserves that. And apparently, apparently, Somehow, there was a ship that got caught in the disruptor field, and the rain there was Raincore on it. So now the Rakata have Raincore. Somehow. Sorry, I have to make that meme. So the elders made a pact with Revan to help him get the Star Forge, and we're like, hey, we're back. And they're like, hey, you didn't fulfill your end of the bargain. We're like, hey, we're changed. And like, okay, we'll help you. In order to get rid of the disruptor field, to allow us to go to the Star Forge, we need to go into this temple. So the Elder Rakata will give us access to the temple. This next part is just me walking back and going through a long cutscene. So this would be another really good time for donations. One of the nice things being an RPG speedrun is we got some, some chiller moments. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Oh. What the heck? Did I use an extra stim on accident? I might have accidentally overwritten one of my stims. Well, it's not it's not the end of the world. Yeah, this is just a cutscene. Nothing big going on here. Great time for donations. Yeah, I'm glad that I buy extra stims in case I do make a small mistake like that. We do have to bring Jolie and Juhani with us. Which actually isn't as bad as having to deal with Karth and Bastila on Leviathan. Uh oh. Story time. What are you doing oh, there, Malik? The preparations are nearly complete. Every day the Star Forge adds more ships to our fleet. It is operating at nearly 300% of our projections. The fleet is assembling around the Star Forge and awaits your instructions. Okay. Whoa! What happened to your face? We have a meme in the KOTOR speedrunning community that this is the jaw-dropping cutscene. Jeez, Malik, your dentist bill must be really cheap. You only have like eight teeth to have worked on. As you wish, Lord Malik. Spooky. So I need to activate solo mode here. Yes. What and I'm gonna move Juha Juhani and Jolie. The reason I do that is if I activate solo mode and don't move them, oddly enough, they can still move. Like your characters will move for a few steps and that might bring them close enough to the combat. If Juhani and Jolie don't get into combat, I can enter into this next transition zone. If they do get into combat, I can go to this next transition zone and I lose a lot of time. We go to the catacombs. We need to access a computer. And this computer will enable us to go to the roof where we can access another computer to get rid of the disruptor shield. Okay, I had to spell the letter H. Okay, Seraphim, you can do this. Okay, whew, I did it. 
you could get a lot of lore on the ricotta and the star forge and all that but we're, we're just gonna get what we need and get out of here gee i hope bastila is doing okay i'm sure she won't turn to the dark side she's pretty strong yes your wish yes I do want to get two force powers ready. Force Valor for some extra DPS. And Force Valor does help against some force powers and energy resistance, which also helps against force powers. I'm also going to be attacking a droid in the next room. It doesn't matter if I kill it, I just have to hit it. The reason is when I come back this way, the droids can sometimes spawn near the entryway. And Jahani and Jolie will get targeted by them and they'll get caught here and I can't exit the temple because they're caught in a loading zone. But if you attack it, even if it survives, they'll walk back to the first area and they'll be close enough to the exit. Oh, it's Bastila, you're safe. But why do you have a red lightsaber? What, what's going on, Bastila? What, she fell to the dark side? Oh, jeez. We're gonna have to fight her. Okay, good thing we had all those force powers on. Otherwise, we would have gotten stunned. Or, yeah, our force powers on, we would have gotten stunned. We are gonna remain true to the light. Because it's faster. If you go to the Star Forge now with Bastila, you have to take her with you through the whole thing. And it's way slower to have a party member than to just... Uh, do the light side because you can go solo it's nearly 10 minutes slower to do dark side we also get our final level up with a run to increase our strength one more time and we get our one and only dark side ability force drain aha see how this droid's moving if i didn't attack that first droid it would be up near the entrance and johanny and jolie would be up there and i couldn't exit the loading zone We're gonna use Force Drain in the final boss, but I'll explain why when we get there. For now, all we have to do is get back to our ship and be on our merry way. Okay, sometimes when Jahani and Julia are fighting the Ricotta, <laughs> They'll like be fighting the Ricotta while they talk to us in this cutscene. It's kind of funny. See if you can you keep your eye out for Where's it. Is she alive? What happened inside that temple? Oh, they it, sometimes you can watch one of them attack. This time they didn't do it. Oh well. Gotta repair the hyperdrive. And now it's time to go to the Star Forge. We are at the end of the game. One more area. Can we do it? Can we save the galaxy from the evil Sith menace? Admiral Dodonna, this is Karthanasi. We're receiving your transmission. Stay hydrated. This cutscene is around three minutes long. And would be kind of the last good time to do donations. It's also a great stretch break. We don't have time for me to fully explain. Uh, that space station is far older than you can imagine. Maybe we should pull the fleet back and retreat. I don't know if we have the firepower to go up. Gotta love the stretch the breaks. Technology. You can't do that, Admiral. The Star Forge is a factory of immense power. It's been churning out the capital ships, snub fighters, and assault droids that have powered the Sith War effort. You have to Look at Karth go. Being all we'll be leader, leaderly like. Forces. Unbelievable. Why would the Sith fleet be so well organized? It's because of Bastila. Ah, that's right. Bastila is evil now. She's using her battle meditation against us. Tragic. on that space station right now, using her battle meditation against you and your fleet. This is Master Vandar. A number of Jedi Knights have joined our fleet under his command. Hey, it's Vandar. You survived. Hooray. One thing I forgot to mention is Malak went to Dantooine and destroyed all the Jedi. Forgot about that story point. How 
I'll say one more salutation to those of you who are joining me through the Twitch chat. It's good to have you guys here. Thanks for hanging out. As we conclude this amazing speed run. That's you! Oh my gosh! Woo! Don't worry, Admiral. <laughs> the Evan Hawk and her crew are gonna see this through to the end. That's right, Karth. That's right. Well, actually, it's just gonna be me. I'm gonna see it through to the end. You all are staying on the Evan Hawk so you don't get aggro the enemy so I can go faster. Like normal, we're going to go alone, activate force speed, so that will duration glitch it. And the Jedi here are here to help us Before out. They... Hooray! Yeah, there's a lot of unskippable cutscenes on Star Forge, unfortunately. Damn! So much for catching them unprepared. Language. We'll deal with these things. You get into the <laughs> uh, I will have to say, child me who was not used to modern graphics, but was very appeased by 2003 graphics, saw that fight scene and was like, whoa, that's cool. I want to note that I have the Hyper Adrenal Alacrity Stim equipped in my menu. Throughout this whole run, we've been equipping med pack, or using med packs and equipping stims through the inventory because it's faster than waiting for the animation through the combat queue. But there's going to be a door coming up that's going to push us down. And as we get pushed down, we can use the stim, getting the 30% movement increase, movement speed increase, while we're falling. It's kind of a neat little way to activate the stim early on. But oh, crud. These assault droids want us. They want to kill us. But we're going to just run past them. We do have to hit this one droid in order for him to move. Starforge is not too bad. The biggest problem with Starforge is there are, are some dark Jedi that will use force powers, just like stun you, whirlwind you, and it's a nightmare. It's very slow. All right, we got three elite Jedi. Can they take out the Sith? Oh, not that one. Come on, green light saber man. You can do it. In the KOTOR speedrunning community, we call them bullet men. Because they have bullets. Ah, more victims for us to slaughter. One way we can mitigate the force powers ability a chance of affecting us is to use force valor and energy resistance but this is ultimately like a, a D, D type game so even though we could do all that we want to race ourselves sometimes the dice rolls just don't go in your favor it's part of the rng of the run this run is not Super RNG heavy. There's just like Paris is RNG heavy, but the variance in combat is fairly minimal, especially once you get stims. But the uh, force powers ruining your life. Uh, well, that's a bit of RNG that you can't really control. All right, hello, computer terminal. And we have just enough computer spikes to disable the turrets, allowing us to move to the next area. Okay, cool. They are trying to use force powers on me. Thankfully, that didn't work.
it is not unheard of to get force whirlwind or stun for like 30 seconds there it is not good Bastila, you turn on us i'm sad oh well actually fun fact we're going to be able to save her there's a reason we got 13 persuasion with the empathy feat we got later like early on in the game with 13 persuasion and dominate mind we have enough persuasion to just mash through conversations if you don't have enough persuasion you have to do very specific dialogue But with the persuasion that we have, we can just mash through everything much quicker. Now, there is one required fight I have to do beyond the second door. And uh, that's usually not too bad. We also want to use the other stims. The main annoyance with this fight is the Jedi in the back can force push you like a billion times and stun you. I like to rush him. And see. He's less likely to use it. And he kind of did it to me. That's fine. That wasn't too bad. All right, we can get out of here. Goodbye, Dark Jedi. As a glitchless speedrunner, I had to be very careful. So this Bachelor fight has three phases to it. I cannot mash through the dialogue because it causes a glitch that skips a fight or a phase in the fight. Not good. So I want to be very careful. Okay, we're good. Now we can fight Basila and mash the rest of the way. With that one conversation, I need to make sure I hit two and I don't mash. We're, we're pretty powerful now. Between our lightsaber upgrades and the stems, yeah, we're, we're really strong. And we just tell Bastila we love her and she loves us and... Okay, I guess we're in love now. Woohoo! And she's like, I'm in love with you. I'm going to help the Republic. And we're like, okay. Green Squadron moving in. All right, all that's left is to take on the diabolical... My, okay, I thought my force speed ran out for a second. The diabolical Darth Malak. For some reason, this next area will play a bunch of loud sound effects. I don't know why this one area plays loud sound effects. So if you are sensitive to loud noises, I would turn your volume down until these six droids uh, are done spawning. Darth Malak's going to be all like, ooh, I'm evil and cool and Sith-like. He's going to kill these two Jedi with no hesitation. Whoa, throws his lightsaber. Electric use of one. Whoa, that guy's scary. Time for the final boss. This door. Okay, we win. <laughs> no, you usually that, that door works. All right, we got our stims, we got our force powers. It is time for the final battle against Darth Malak. Normally, there's a really cool so song that plays. Well but done, remember when I was talking about how the game was... leaks memory? You can start to tell there are issues when the sound stops. And it's it's fine now, but if we were to play for another like half hour, 45 minutes, the game would really bug out and crash. You continue to Oops, I think I use an antidote pack bodies. instead of a life pack. You should recognize Oopsies. them from the academy. These are Jedi who fell when I attacked Dantooine. But yeah, that's why we do the safety save, so we avoid anything weird happening in the late game. Because if we're too slow, the game could crash. So the normal way that Malik works is he will restore his health after every time you fight him. But if you get drain life, we can drain all of the Jedi that Malak wants to use and fight him only one more time. So instead of fighting, fighting him like eight more times, we just have to fight him one more time. Ooh. Come on. 
I like how you can go into this corner and just zap that Jedi from there. Really, really nice. I'm gonna use Force Valor, but Malak likes to get rid of your Force powers. Really, really annoying. Where is he? Come on, Malak. Don't do that. All right, it's time to fight Malik. This is all RNG. I had a really good first hit. Time is gonna stop. Time happens when his knee touches the ground and the screen goes black. Yeah, decent combat roll so far. And time. Um. All right, we did it. We vanquished Malik, saved the galaxy, and we went fast in the process. I hope you enjoyed the showcase of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic any percent glitch list speedrun. Uh, I want to just talk a little bit about uh, why I have my estimate the way that I have it. I have it at two hours and five minutes. The RTA in this room was one hour, 57 minutes, and 38 seconds. The reason I have to keep it at two hours and five minutes is the game can crash. Uh, I can crash in some weird spots and it will cost me several minutes. I had pretty decent RNG throughout, but if everything goes super wrong, uh, I want to make sure I have uh, that cushion there. Because um, my RNG was pretty good. It could have been a lot worse. So uh, that's why I have the estimate the way that I do. But I hope you learned something about the speed run. Thank you so much for watching and uh, hope to see you around in the future. Bye.